Okay, this is a video going through the Desmos activity we did on the beginning of class before we jumped into 1.8b. All right, the first um, is I've given, I've said f of x is a function when and the domain's negative three to five and the range is negative five to seven and find the domain of this new transformed function. Okay, so we know inside the function that is the transformation of the domain. So this four x plus one. And I like to always start by, instead of separately doing the extremes of the domain and seeing how this transformation affects it, I like to put in between the extremes of the domain the, um, the transformation. So 4x plus 1 and the extremes of the domain, not that, the extremes of the domain are negative 3 to 5. So... To get my new domain, I would be subtracting one, which means graphically I'm shifting to the left one. So I've got negative four, four. And then to get to X, I am dividing by four or horizontally shriek, shrinking by a factor of four. So my new domain is negative one to one. So again, look at what we did there. We worked from the outside in doing reverse order of operations there to get my new domain. Now for the range, because remember, I only know how to do f of negative three to five, so I have to find my x values so that I'm still only evaluating ultimately negative three to five. Um, <laughs> okay, so for the range, range, the nice thing is I found the domain such that I, um, I'm essentially evaluating from negative three to five. And so I know that this function will output negative seven to five. So coming out of that F will be negative seven to five. I'm gonna multiply by two and subtract eight. So I've got negative 14 minus eight um, is negative 20, oh, shoot, I knew that sounded wrong. I, it should be. <laughs> Ooh, it should be negative five to seven. Sorry, folks. Um, so it should be negative 18, and two times seven is 14, minus eight is six. So that's your new range. So the range following the order of operations with the transformations, whereas um, the domain, you're reversing the order there. Okay, so now let's look at something graphically involving absolute values. So I find it helpful, particularly if the graph has a limited domain, to first state what the domain of the original graph is. And in this case, the domain of this original graph, actually, I will put it there. The domain is negative uh, 5 to 5. And the range of the original, might as well give that, is 0 to 4. Okay. So it looks like both these graphs um, are, we'll do, I'll do the first one, maybe what color here? Maybe I'll do it in blue. Um, the first one here um, and the second one, which I'll do in black, both of them are um, domain transformations. Uh, in, in other words, there's only something happening with thin F. So let's put the transformation, let's start with the, the blue one, um, between the extremes, the original extremes of the domain. Because this is going to tell me what I do here in terms of the transformation. So the first thing I'm going to do is shift to left two. So it's going to go from negative seven to three. So every point would go left two. So in other words, my graph, I'm going to put it in green for now. Um, so if I went left to, it's looking like, um, so this point here will be left to, and then we'll keep going. This would be left to. So this is, this green is just if I went every point left to. All right, but we're not done. At, so it's saying absolute value of x between negative seven, three. Well, remember what we talked about last class. An absolute value transformation means 
Whatever is on the right side of the y-axis, in other words, for every positive x value, it's going to have the same output as it did before. But negative x values are going to, if I put a negative into the absolute value, the absolute value is going to change it to positive, and then it will go through the function. So in other words, negative values are going to have the same outputs as the positive counterparts. So I can only do the negative values that I know the positive y values of. So in this graph, I can only do from three, negative three to three. So again, graphically, that means I'm gonna mirror what's on the positive side onto the negative side. Let's see, one, two, three. So it's gonna be negative three. So this is my graph. That's it, just that blue piece. That's all I've got. All right, let's erase the green here. Um, so that's my graph there. Okay, so now let's do this other one, which I'm gonna do in black here. Um, so I've got F of uh, absolute value X plus two. All right, so x plus 2 with the absolute value around is going to go between negative 5 and 5. Now, the first thing here is to deal with the absolute value, which means whatever is on the right side, I'm going to mirror onto the right of the y-axis. I'm going to mirror onto the left of the y-axis. So I'm actually going to start this in yellow. So this positive is staying the same, but then on the left side, I'm going to have the exact same thing. So let's see, I'm gonna put it, so negative five. So it's gonna look like that. And then, so it's still gonna go negative five to five because I could go all the way five to the positive side. So I can still go negative five to the negative side. And then, so I've got X plus two is between negative five and five. And so now I'm gonna shift left two or subtract two. So my graph is gonna go from negative seven to three. So shifting everything over two. So instead of at, it'll now be at negative seven. And this will be over two, everything over two. Um, two and two so it looks like that okay all right so now let's check out um number three here all right so now again i'm dealing with this absolute value i've got a new domain and range and I'm asking, find the, new, um, find the new domain and range given this absolute value transformation. So I'm going to start with the domain and I'm gonna put this between the extremes. And this says the first thing I do is left two or subtract two. But now absolute value, remember what that does, that transformation, absolute value in X. It takes everything to the, it keeps everything to the right of the Y axis. So everything to the right of zero stays the same and mirrors it to the left. So this graph now will have a domain between negative four and four. However, because I've eliminated anything to the, any graph that was originally part of the left of the Y axis, I actually can't, because I don't have the graph in front of me, I have no idea what I've eliminated. I could have eliminated parts of the range, the extremes. So I have no idea what has gone away. So I cannot find the range. Again, because what was the original graph, it was still, we were still had the original graph at this step. I had just shifted left two. But to do an absolute value in X transformation, I've got to, what that involves is mirroring whatever's on the right to the left. So whatever was originally on the left of the Y axis is no longer present. So that could, I could have lost the extremes of my domain, uh, my extremes of my range. I just don't know. So you can't find the range. Let's do a similar case happens here. So putting um, x squared plus two transformation between the extremes of the range, left two to begin with, uh, 
And now look at this transformation. So I am putting in values, but then they're going to be squared. So x squared is always greater than or equal to negative 5, and I can't take the square root of that. So I really am looking at x squared. When I'm putting squared, I'm only getting positive. I'm looking at x squared less than or equal to 4. So what values can I put in so that I have x squared less than or equal to 4? Well, in fact, you can only put in negative 2 to 2. And those are, um, so a, just like before, you're going to mirror whatever's on the positive side onto the negative side. For example, when I put in 1, I'm going to get the same output as if I put in negative 1 because it's going to be put in, squared, and then added 2 before it goes into the function. So the... Um, so again, the graph has some mirroring effect. What that is, is tricky. So um, what exactly that'll look like. So I'm not going to ask you to graph this particular type of transformation, whereas I might ask you to graph an absolute value of x transformation like we did um, in the previous problem. But because I've lost part of the graph, uh, I, like the previous problem, I cannot find the range. Again, because we've cut off essentially what those values, um, the, the original negative values that um, were associated with particular y values, those have been gone. And instead, there was this mirroring effect of positive values over the y-axis. So again, I lost part of the graph, so I can't find the range.